All right, everyone, we're uh, waiting on Mr. Peters. He should be here any minute. Uh, so just please stand by. Stand by. The release of Boris Continuum Complete 2021 includes the most significant particle illusion update in years, with huge new features that benefit both motion graphics and VFX artists. So let's start with probably the biggest new feature, which is 3D. Particle Illusion has always been a 2D particle system, but that's all changed now with new 3D tools giving you brand new creative options. Particles are converted to 3D with a single button click, which adds new built-in camera models to easily control the look of your simulation. And if you use After Effects and the Continuum plugin version of Particle Illusion, you can also use the comp camera to integrate Particle Illusion into your 3D scenes. And 3D can also be used to increase the usability of the presets in the growing Particle Illusion preset library. Turbulence is another great new feature in Particle Illusion 2021, enabling far more natural and organic movement of your particles. In this example, adding turbulence completely changes the look and feel of this simple area emitter. All particles have their own independent turbulence settings, which allows you to give each particle just the right amount of turbulence. In this example, I can fine tune the smaller particles, giving them more natural movement without affecting the rest of the particles in the emitter. Super emitters also benefit from the new turbulence options, with free emitters having their own turbulence which can be adjusted independently of particle turbulence for even greater levels of control. Turbulence can be added to existing presets to give them a more natural organic flow and used to set up these kind of swarming style effects quickly and easily. The new lines feature in Particle Illusion 2021 enables you to easily connect particles using lines in various ways and is perfect for stunning motion graphics looks. New connect options enable you to connect particles to the emitter, to their birth position, and also to each other. You can use lines to build whole new looks or completely change the way an existing preset looks. Deflectors have also been updated in Particle Illusion 2021, allowing you to create more realistic random bounce. In previous versions, particles would bounce off deflectors in a single stream, and it wasn't very realistic. But in Particle Illusion 2021, they bounce far more randomly, and can even be set to break on impact. And along with all of these massive new features, there are a host of smaller user interface updates and enhancements, which make it easier than ever to work inside Particle Illusion. And just a reminder, all of these new features have been added to the standalone version of Particle Illusion, which still remains absolutely folks here we are of course we have a little bit of uh star trek star wars and <laughs> we have mr alec peters who's on the set he's walking down and here he comes hey 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 troy how you doing alec doing all right doing all right by the way that's uh let's uh, show you my background Little oh, skydiver action oh, back there. UFO, UFO. <laughs> yeah. And then over there, that's a, uh, oh. You're still here. We still see you. I'm still here. Okay. And then I was going to say, and that is uh, Cisco's uh, desktop computer and his uh, USS Horizon model. Oh, I'm awesome, man. You've got a great few, a few little tidbits. Oh, yeah. There's Starbucks Star Star in it. Oh, that Starbucks helmet? You're kidding. Yeah. yeah, you know, I did the Battlestar Galactica auctions. And um, <laughs> I, I, at one point I had a lot of stuff. And I, I you know, that I, I was like my best customer from the auction. <laughs> <laughs> understood. Understood. Awesome. Awesome. Well, so, well, Alec, thank you so much for, first of all, coming today. I know you're, you're a very busy guy. And I know you're probably very hard to get a hold of. And I've only been very, very fortunate to be able to have a line to you. 
Um, yeah, anytime for you, Troy. And, and it might be alumni related because we both went to UNC. So yeah, so, baby, go heels. <laughs> go heels. I'm sorry, that's my USC. That's that's USC. Go oh. heels. I coached at USC, oh. University of Southern California, the real yeah. USC. Yeah, yeah, USC, absolutely. The Trojans. Around here, you say USC, and people think South Carolina. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, well, listen, man. Um, so I'm going to give you the floor, okay? And uh, it's all you for um, for the time allotted here. <coughs> Folks are really interested in what you have to say. And, um, you know, you have until uh, – you have until – Six, seven. You, you have you have forty minutes, so you have until seven uh, till about seven o'clock. So you could do Q and A all that time. I'll be I'll be nearby, and um, you can. Uh, okay, go, great. There will be some comments that will come across the screen. Great. Okay. So um, you know, uh, uh, Troy asked me to speak about. Um, Fundraising, real fundraising, and 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 um, uh, crowdfunding, and um, you know we did. Uh, here's my history in this. If you're not familiar, so we did. Um, my first Kickstarter was for Prelude to Axnar, our short film, which just crossed five million views on YouTube. And um, of course, you can see it at Axnar. If you go to the Axnar YouTube channel, just go search Axnar on YouTube. You can see our short film, and. Um, and that was literally my first first project I ever produced, um, and it was ch it was challenging because I really knew nothing about making a small film at the t a time, small independent film, and the way that um, that came together was I started working with the fan film Star Trek New Voyages back in two thousand and ten, uh, and at that time uh, James Coley who ran that production. Um, we were talking and he basically convinced me to write a script for my Garth of Izar story and, and make a short film, uh, a fan film, which, which um, I wrote the script and in writing the script, we kind of plotted out and realized we needed about, you know, at the time, I think the first budget number was $400,000, three, $400,000. And so we're like, well, listen, no one's going to give us that kind of money right off the bat. Right. So we were like, we need to do kind of do something to prove we can, we're worthy of that. And my idea was to make what became Prelude to Axnar, which was basically to do green screen interviews. Um, so you shoot everything in a studio on a green screen, which means you don't have to build sets. Now I had just in, in October, 2013, I had been invited to be part of uh, Star Trek Renegades by Sky Conway. And um, I helped on that set for a week or so. I think it was a two-week shoot, but I think I was only there a week or so. And that was eye-opening. That really taught me a lot. And one of the things I really came to realize a lot was like, you know what we want to do for 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 this for this teaser for this short proof of concept is we don't want to build any sets because they that was a huge expense for them. Now, on the other hand, what they did was really interesting was um, when they went to raise money, they did a little green screen teaser with Walter Koenig as Chekhov and Tim Russ as Tuvok. And it was, you know, it was Admiral Chekhov and, and Cap Commander Tuvok. Tuvok. And, um, and that was really fascinating. And, and they made, I mean, they raised almost $400,000 in their uh, Kickstarter Indiegogo, however they did it. So, um, really, uh, it was really, really interesting. And I, and that made me think, I go, wow, hmm, yeah, that's the way to do it. And so what we did was, um, we decided to shoot on green screen. I was like, let's not build sets. Let's do something simple. How simple can we do it? And I, and I said, why don't we do it like a documentary? And the inspiration for that was really, um, was really uh, the episode of MASH um, called The Interview. And it was basically done as a series of, of newsreel interviews, you know, because that takes place in the 50, early 50s, and newsreels were still the thing, right? 
Um, and it was brilliant. It was brilliant. And I was, and I pitched it to my director at the time. And I said, this is what I want to do. And he's like, oh my God, that's a great idea. And so that's how we drove that. So in order to raise money for that, and I was thinking we could do that for about $20,000, which was really naive. And um, what we did, so what we did was we, cr we created what's called an ask, ASK, an ask video, which was basically us saying, hey, uh, give us money, <laughs> right? Donate to our Kickstarter. And we were, and I was like, gosh, if, if we said, I think the goal was $10,000. I think that's what the goal was. Or maybe it was 15. I forget. I forget if it was, I think maybe it was 15. Um, and we did that. And so we, because I was thinking, oh, well, it's going to cost 5,000 for the actors and 5,000 for makeup and 5,000 for uh, visual effects and 5,000 for the production. Now that was incredibly naive. And, um, and thankfully we raised a lot more than that. So we launched that Kickstarter and our ask video is honestly, it's still, I still watch our ask video. I'm still like, wow, that's really good. <laughs> and, um, Richard Hatch was in it and we had gotten some commitments already from other actors, including JG Hertzler. And, um, so we, we shot that ask video for about 500 bucks and then we launched our Kickstarter. And I knew nothing about doing a Kickstarter. This is 2014 at this point, right? This uh, we uh, this is March of 2014. I think we sh were shooting the Ask video in December of 2013, roughly. Um, and then we and then I edited it with the help of Mark Edward Lewis. Actually, Mark, uh, it was interesting. Mark, I I asked Mark. Mark is um, long, he's been with me a long time. He's a dear friend, dear friend of Richard's too. And I said to um, Mark, I said, Mark, would you edit this ask video for 500 bucks? And he said, no, but I'll teach you to edit it for 500 bucks. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. I would love to learn how to edit. So we took a three-day weekend and literally he, he sat me in front of the computer at this time it was it was final cut seven was what which was really easy to learn and um bam i just he started teaching me how to do it and we and you know i started cutting and we you know he and i did it together i mean he's the teacher and i'm the student and i know nothing so you know it was really a joint effort and um and i really learned a lot and and so we we released it in March, like the first of March, and by the thirty first, we had a hundred thousand dollars, hundred one thousand dollars and change, and that was a sh that was shocking. Um, Pravi says I attended the Renegade premiere at Crest Westwood as a cre yeah that was that, I remember that I remember that I didn't go but I remember that that was uh, yeah and um, he does a great job Sky Conway it does there's there's some things he's really really good at. Um, and uh yeah so i remember that and 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 so yes that was that was great and um and, and renegades was really the precursor to axonar right because they kind of did it and by being on set and helping them out i really learned a lot of do's and don'ts you know so i you could i could be on that production and i could say uh-huh and and i saw where everything went wrong on that production i mean it was the Renegades was, you know, now they had done of gods and men, and they had done that back in I don't know when that was. That was six oh six two thousand six two thousand seven something like that. They had done of gods and men, which was a feature length Star Trek fan film. They did that one, and it was it was mildly successful. It took them a while to get it out. Uh, challenge was that visual effects were really bad. I say really bad Con compared to the state of the art at the time, they weren't particularly good. Um, there was kind of like when you see Babylon five now you're going, Oh, that's okay. Um, actually Babylon five holds up better than their. their so anyway, that was uh, of guys. So that was one of the challenges they addressed in renegades. So renegades, they had Tobias Richter who we use do their effects and renegades visual effects look amazing. They look great, look fantastic, right? Apologize for the dog barking in the background. Um, so, uh, 
so yeah, so I learned a lot basically um, from Frank Zank Zanka, who was the line producer, uh, the, the, a lot of good stuff. He's a he's really interesting and, and good guy. Um, and, oh, and also just a lot with mistakes to avoid, right? There was a lot of last minute rewriting of their script, right? And that, and that caused a lot of chaos. And I mean, last minute, like they go home, they'd bring in totally new pages and be shooting totally new stuff. And the makeup department was not prepared, right? Uh, you, you can't be rewriting a script that late, right? You can rewrite dialogue. There's, I, I learned from Mike Demerit, who is, who was the, um, one of the assistant directors for Star Trek Voyager and Star Trek Enterprise. And he said, uh, a locked script, uh, you need a locked script to be ready to shoot. A locked script is there are no cha changes to scenes or sets or uh, characters. Okay, so dialogue can change. Dialogue can change at the last second, right? But anyway... And they violated that rule, and it really came to haunt them. And um, and that was a big lesson I learned. So it's like super pre preparation. Um, and with Prelude, I always wanted to get um, professionals doing everything. So, okay, let's get back to the crowdfunding. So we raised $101,000. Here's I, – I think the skill, if you're going to crowdfund, there's a few skills you need. And the first skill you need is – you need to be really damn well organized. It's listen, being an executive producer is like being CEO of a company. It, there's very little difference in the grand scheme of things. You have to have those same skill sets. You have to be good with people. You have to be able to pick and manage a team well. You have to be smart enough to let that team do what they do well. Okay, don't micromanage. Um, and and. And um, you better be able to use a spreadsheet. Excel is your best friend. And I'm, I'm, I'm always shocked um, with producers who don't, who aren't proficient in Excel. I do everything in Excel. So I'm not going to do something unless I budget it in Excel. And um, we did that for Prelude. And not knowing the scope, again, first time, you know, the, I have been an entrepreneur for 30 years. More, more than 30 years. 30, yeah. Basically started in 1992. As I, I mean, I had my first company when I was in high school, but realistically, 1992. And it doesn't matter what industry, when I skip industries, when you go from one industry to another, there's always a learning curve. So it's really, so that that's really important. And I think one of the things the most valuable commodity you have is money. That is the most valuable commodity you have because there's never enough of it. And when you think there's enough, there isn't. And you, so you have to plan really, really stupid tight budgets. And also, if you're the executive producer, always question every single expense because directors love to spend your money. I'm telling you. The, the directors, they love to spend your money, you know. Um, and I use this as an example, but in our shoot in October 2019, which was, a which you know, was about $15,000 over budget. Now, it was a, a, initially it was supposed to be a $50,000 shoot. It wound up being about $65,000. And, um, and that was because the director and the producer – didn't really, I mean, they didn't want to adhere to the to the budget. They needed things that we really didn't need. For example, and this is just an example, but it, it gives you the big picture. We they spent like a thousand dollars on a really nice mobile laboratory, basically porta potties, but really super nice ones, right? Yeah, think of it, it's a thousand dollars for the weekend. It better be a super nice porta potty, right? A three-day, three-day rental. And and we have three restrooms. Because we were using the facility next door, which had two, the at the time the six thousand square foot building next to us was empty, and our landlord let us use it for free. So I had two restrooms there, one in my building, and I'm like, why are we renting port potties for a thousand dollars? Oh well, you know we don't want anyone to wait for a restroom. 
And at the time I bought it. And then afterwards I was like, okay, no one waited. If we didn't have those restrooms, we would have been fine. Those are the type of expenses that are going to pop up that are going to kill you. All right. I'm telling you, and this is the beauty of my current team. Um, we fired our director last year and um, I've got a, a, a new director and a new DP. Um, and while we had a wonderful DP at our shoot, our last October, 2019 shoot, um, the DP, I have a new DP who is one of our camera operators. And part of the reason I have him is because he, he excels at and, and relishes the chance to work with a small crew, which in COVID-19 is absolutely a huge, huge benefit, right? So there's lots of things for COVID-19 we can talk about a little later. And and also put in the comments what you want to hear. Because, you know, if I'm going off on the wrong tangent, if you're like, Alec, we don't care about that. We want to hear more about crowdfunding. Whatever. Hey, ask me questions. Happy happy to answer. So um, you're going to spend money and you're going to spend money in places you're going to regret spending it. Uh, and you can always send me a budget if you have it. I'll be happy to review it for you. Not that I'm an expert, but it's always good to have a critical eye, someone to ask questions. And I think that's one of the th really important things as an executive producer you need is someone to ask questions, really good questions. Okay, so crowdfunding. There's lots of books. There's lots of websites. There's lots of YouTube channels about how to run a successful crowdfunding campaign. And I encourage you to go in and review all of as much as you can. Right? There's especially a lot of information about how to promote. Okay, now what we did was I started the Axonar Facebook page. I don't know, 2012, and we didn't shoot till 2014. Maybe it was 2013, but it was like a year, a year and a half early. I started the page. And um, so we had a, we had, I want to say we had like 8,000 people when we were ready to launch the crowdfunder. Huge advantage, right? Now, I, as I always tell people, the big advantage is always that we were doing Star Trek. So we had an installed fan base. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to tilt that a little bit. And, um, it is so hard to raise money for your independent film. So hard. I having a property. I you know if you when you look at the, the films that raise money, it's a lot easier to raise money for a Star Trek fan film or a Star Wars fan film or Bat you know Bat in the Sun or you know and there's a great great there's a phenomenal property Bat in the Sun if you check them out on YouTube they do the Batman fan films with Kevin Porter as Batman. Um, great, great, great property, right? They're not raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for their Batman films. Their latest one has Michael Madsen in it. I mean, it's in, in, insane, right? I think that the the period where, you know, we raised 500 and change in our first Kickstarter, then we moved to Indiegogo a year later and raised 600. I, those days are over. Those days are over. I mean, Action Art could come out and be the best Star Trek ever. We're not going to raise half a million dollars for our next project. Right. Um, so, um, yeah. So I, I, I urge you to take advantage of all the different places there are uh, with knowledge of promoting a Kickstarter. Now, you, there's, you always get spammed. When you do a Kickstarter, you get spammed by people who are saying, oh, I'll help you promote your Kickstarter. We want hundreds of dollars, whatever. I don't use any of them because I can pretty much do whatever they're doing. So I urge you to be careful with that. Um, Don uh, Don Brothers, is that it? It's either Don Bros or Don Brothers. You tell me how you want me to pronounce it. It says, how long did your initial Kickstarter campaign run for? 30 days. It's kind of standard with Kickstarter, 30 days, right? Use I, th listen. They will tell you thirty days is the best. Run it for thirty days. We've been doing a lot of little Kickstarters for little projects, swag, XNR swag posters, patches, things like. That. And we've been doing two weeks just because it's like, look, I don't want it to drag out. I want to turn these over and get the next new one out there. So, um, but t thirty days is is good. Okay, and there it'll 
take off in the beginning and then it'll plateau and then it'll take off again in the, in the end. Um, but uh, yes, Dombrus, OPM, other people's money. Yes. Now, um, so let's talk about the, 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 um, the donations. There's a lot of secrets and I, I'm, I got to admit, and I haven't really checked it out because we haven't used Indiegogo since 2017, but at that time, their platform was a lot better than Kickstarters, I felt. Um, so I would urge you to check them out. Um, and there were cer certain things um, that uh, Indiegogo does better. Here's the big thing. Here's the, the, the mistake we made, which we're still paying for, is the biggest pain in the ass is delivering perks. Okay, that is that will be your downfall. I promise you. We made the mistake of not delivering perks when we had the money, right? Um, we got embroiled in the lawsuit with CBS and Paramount. You know, Diana wanted to wait until all the perks were uh, available and then ship them all together, which was a good decision at the time. But it wound up screwing us because we sent out patch. Now I'm still sending stuff out now, right? Which is okay, which is good, and we have a we have a better system for doing it now. But we don't charge people postage on Kickstarter. We charge them postage on our storefront because our storefront is a WooCommerce enabled, which is the, one of the big e-commerce platforms, which is built into uh, built into WordPress, which is the biggest blogging software in the world, right? So, and then we use ShipStation to manage all our shipments. So it works beautifully. It, it really does. So I force now everyone, like if you buy something, if you donate on Kickstarter, you then have to go, once the Kickstarter is over, you go over here to our website, airystudios.net, you can, can check it out, and you pay for shipping. That means you're entering your address, you're paying for shipping, and all I got to do is stuff a poster tube or whatever and ship it out to you, Right? It's works really, really well. Um, and I am more than happy to talk to anyone uh, who, who has questions about it. I'll happy to, to, to do that, right? Um, and, and help you out and, and tell you how things are going. Um, because it's made our lives a lot easier, right? It's made our lives a lot easier. Um, but delivering perks is the Achilles heel. Now, Achilles heel. Now, there are great systems now that help you that I don't know a lot about. We used Backer Kit. There's um, – what's the other one I'm investigating now? Uh, Pledge, Pledge Box, is it? Pledge Box. That's another one, right? I like that one. Um, so I kind of urge you to look at these and, and, and their whole – Oh, did I lose you guys? No, I'm sorry. Thought I lost you for a second. Um, so I really uh, I know, the light is a little hard. Can I get away from that light? Um, there we go. Um, so I really urge you. I know I want, I want the skydiver in the background, right? But I got to frame myself right. Um, so I really I, and I, listen again. There's so so much to tell you, like. Um, if you're giving out perks, you want up until at least $35 to be digital perks only. You don't want to be shipping perks to people that gave you 10 bucks. In our world, digital perks up to $35. Then something simple like patches. Well, the patches fit in a first class envelope. You can send three patches for one ounce, right? There's one ounce of first class mail. That's 51 cents. Um, so there, right? Understand if you're shipping posters, make them small posters, 11 by 17, because those will fit in a, a, a shipping tube, a small shipping tube from Uline. If you don't know about Uline, learn U-L-I-N-E. It's the biggest provider of shipping materials in the United States. They have um, warehouses uh, around the country. And I have always been fortunate enough to live within an hour of one of their locations. So I go pick up all their stuff. But they deliver. 
Um, and their catalog is this thick and everyone gets it and they send you a gazillion of them and it has everything in the world. Um, so shipping supplies you get from Uline. But how you choose your perks and how you ship them, that is all you're going to spend way too much time if you don't have a system in place. Fortunately, now the systems are so much better than they were when we did. I mean, we have 10,000 donors, right? And and I have an email program, and I send out emails constantly, right? That's, that's a big thing. Um, now, you do that through the Kickstarter system, and you don't get their emails until after the Kickstarter is done, right? So uh, important thing, important thing to know. Um, so you so you're using the update system to send updates, and there's like there's great, there's best practices. You send updates out, and this is what you said the updates about, and then you send additional perks, right? So you want to send cool additional perks for people, um, uh, special perks just for donors. So like once you've donated, you get access to uh, additional perks. Right, that you can that you can buy. Well, we were very successful with that in in the Indiegogo campaign. I think Indiegogo does that very very well. Um, so, um, am I missing any? No, I guess you just yeah, let's just start. Uh, so. Um, so, my so my suggestion. Sorry, I, pre I guess I pressed the wrong button. Um, so my advice is first, do the research on Kickstarter versus Indiegogo, right? Those are your two platforms. Do your research on those, all right? Find what people's experience are. Like Indiegogo was introducing photos with their perks. Indiegogo had introduced your, kicks, your, your, your campaign can stay open after, uh, you know, it closes. Indiegogo was, you could set it so that, if you didn't reach your goal, you still got the money. Kickstarter is only you reach your goal or else you don't get your money. There's a lot of compare. So I would definitely compare the two. Then I would very carefully listen to what people say about shipping perks. I'm happy to share my experience. I'm sure there's lots of information online. But shipping perks, how much money do you spend on the perks? Happy to get tell you where we get all of our perks from, China, and why it's because it's cheap. And uh, printing in the United States, I can give you the different printers we use. You know, Vista print, you printing, uh, I've, uh, you know, uh, Mixed Tees does my stuff out in California. They're amazing. Um, so there's the plan. Learn everything you can, first of all. Then plan uh, uh, accordingly. Plan your, your perks. Plan how you're going to deliver your perks. Like when we delivered perks in 2014 and 15, holy crap, it was such a manual process, right? Now... Boom. You know, now it, the only limitation is the number of labels I can print, orders I can print off of, of ShipStation or shipping software. And I can do 100 in a day by myself. I can do 100 in a day. It's a long day. It's a grueling eight hours. But, yeah, I can do that. Um, so you just have to know how, how, how to do that. Um, and then And then budget the hell out of everything. I just live by your budget, die by your budget. Don't spend money you don't have to spend. That that is my, you know, my serious serious recommendation for you. Um, I'm always available. Alec at axonar.com. Uh, he's uh, Don Bro says. Do you offer onset video shout outs as a digital perk? What value would be? Yeah, that's a great idea. We haven't done that. That is a great idea. We do a lot of live streaming. Right, we do a lot, so that would be an awesome perk, right? What value would you put on this perk? Oh my gosh, I'd say fifty bucks, right? Fifty bucks. Heck, I would do it for twenty-five bucks, you know, because it costs you nothing. You know, it costs you nothing. Um, I would get one of my stars. Hey, Joe and I are going to be doing digital callouts. Uh, you know, at this time, you know, at this day when we're on set, twenty-five bucks. You know. Um, I, I, one of the things I've learned also is, you know, you never want your perks to exceed 10% of the money donated. That's my rule, rule of thumb. Now, the beauty is 
um, if you're wise about your perks, the cost is so little. Um, in doing stuff in China, I know you want to buy U.S., <clears throat> but let's face it, even Donald Trump buys all this stuff in China. Uh, you, you, if you're doing it right, your perks cost you so little that you can give them a lot of good stuff, like create stickers. People love stickers or patches. I get my stickers for like seven cents each for four inch round vinyl stickers, right? What do you sell? Stickers like that go for three, four bucks in the store. I get them for seven cents each, okay? Um, patches, I get, I pay like 70 cents each. Sell them all, all day long for six to 10 bucks, right? So by doing that now, you can offer stuff. You know where your price point is, right? And you can kind of overlay, okay, I'm going to give you a patch and a set of stickers and a pin, 50 cents, right? Uh, and you can kind of do that. So um, so Luke asked if the way to rewatch is certainly. And, um, you know, we're, you know, this gets me thinking that maybe we'll do a video about crowdfunding where I can – where I can do a formal video and talk more about it. But I'm always available for you all. I know, I think we're at our time limit here. Uh, uh, Troy has my information, alec at axnar, A-X-A-N-A-R dot com. Uh, I am more than happy to answer questions. Um, you can just get in touch with me directly, email me. You can Facebook friend me. You can don't, I mean, I have Twitter, but that, the, a week can go by without me looking at Twitter. Uh, I still haven't really got in the grasp of why everyone's so fascinated with Twitter. It's like, I don't want to watch, I, I don't want to look at my phone that much. Meanwhile, Facebook's on all the time. So um, there you go. Um, questions? Because I, you know, I, I can talk all day about this stuff, but I want to make sure, you know, there's a difference between talking and, and giving you the information you need. Plan the hell out of it. Budget the hell out of whatever you're doing. Get your... Uh, get your um, perks in order. Make sure you're doing. You're not spending more than 10% on perks, and, and put it in a situation where it's very easy for you to deliver. I can give you all the systems that we use for shipping, and then um, be really. You really got to be cheap as an executive producer, and I don't mean che cheap's the wrong word. Frugal, and frugal. My, frugal is the right word. It's like look. You've got to question every dollar you're spending. Do I really need to spend this money? You know, and there are places to skim and there are places not to skim. Like as Troy knows, since Troy was one of our sponsors at at, at one of our shoots, is never skimp on food. <laughs> Give no. them the best food you can afford. The best food you can afford. That that will go so far. So we spent at our shoot, I want to say we spent for a three-day shoot. Now we we had like 80 volunteers helping us out, right? It was ridiculous. Um, but that was part of, you know, we wanted to do that. We spent like eight thousand dollars on food. Cause I got a top-notch um food service uh truck to do to do the catering. The food was amazing. You weren't at that shoot, were you, Troy? September no, I, 2019. I, I missed <laughs> you missed out. I, it was the best meals I've had on set. And I, I it was as good, let me put it, it was as good as the stuff I had when I was on Battlestar Galactica. It, it was that good. Um, I had some amazing meals at Battlestar Galactica. We can definitely go to the Q&A. The Q&A. Okay. Room, and we can. Let's do it. Some more questions in there. Uh, everybody has been sent a link. There's a link in your um, Aventive if you've already done that. And for the filmmakers, there's already been a link sent to you in, uh, in the group chat. So I will send that to you, Eric. Uh, Alec, you will have that in just a minute. Yes, uh, th that'd be great. I I'm happy to stick around and answer questions. Okay. Take a look in your... Uh, All right, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Awesome. You have it in your, in your, um, in your text. Matter of fact, I'm gonna. I have to email it. I will email it. Uh, can you email it to me? Yeah, let me email it. Great. All right. 
that's out. You'll have it in less than 30 seconds. All right. Thanks so much, folks. Go join us in the Q&A, and you can follow up there. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>